and the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! Saturday, and you know what that means. It's time for all the toy news, action figure news of the week that interested me. That hopefully interests you. We got a special hotel edition here today, as I am in Los Angeles this week. So I was thinking about skipping toy news, but there was just too much good stuff to talk about. So I, said, I gotta do a quick video from the hotel here. Now, weekly purchases, little channel update. No weekly purchases this week. All my purchases obviously are at home, so I will not have those. So we'll have to do either a special one midweek next week or possibly just an extra large edition next weekend. We'll see what happens there. But I am in LA hitting up the scene, hitting up the shops, hitting up all the kinds of stuff. So more to come on that in the future. Stay tuned to the old social media, all kinds of stuff like that. And of course, this very YouTube channel. So make sure you do subscribe for more details on all that fun stuff. But we'll do a little quick housekeeping as usual. January is almost over. Patreon giveaway, Broadway, NECA gargoyles. Everybody loves a gargoyle, but you never go full goyle as we do know. But if you do, go Broadway. That's what I say. So Broadway is the giveaway this month. Check that out if that interests you. Patreon link in the description below. You can also be a free Patreon member now. So what are you waiting for? Head on over there. But we'll dive into a few other things, of course. The Jack's Classic Superstars book right around the corner. Be ready for that, uh, hopefully, uh, here in the next couple of weeks. So I keep teasing it along. We have did some cover reveals, did some of that. A lot of good stuff. Shout out to the Major Pod group out there. Of course, we know the Major Pod. Uh, give it a nice plug for the book this week as well. Much more to come on that. And there will be a couple of different podcast interviews, things of that nature over the next couple of months I will be on. So hopefully you guys will check out some of those creators as well and uh, more of that kind of stuff. If uh, you're interested, I'm always up to chat figures, chat about the book. So uh, reach out to me, usual places, you guys know that. But let's dive into the toy news of the week this week and this week, a banner week here. I should mention yesterday, uh, Friday, I guess, or two days ago, what is time? What is West Coast time? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, we did do a Mattel Reveals video. Mattel revealed a lot of stuff on the Instagram, Steve Osier, Ringside. Check out that video for a bunch of wrestling news, but we got some more wrestling news that's not Mattel related here, and that's where we're going to start the toy news of the week this week. Starting it off hot. It doesn't start off much hotter than this. This is one of the top of our wrestling figure most wanted list. And it's coming from Bandai of all places. Oh, shout out to Bandai. Shout out Japan. Uh, but it is Bandai Great Muda. We've all needed Great Muda figures. This looks interesting. That's where I'm going to go. I put up my yen. I picked my copy up. It's, I think, 70 bucks, 80 bucks, something like that. So it is pricey to get this imported here. Uh, but we haven't had a fully articulated Great Muda ever, I guess, over this side of the world. And I don't think anywhere. We've had the Char Pros, things like that. But this should be, I don't know, a game changer, but something different. And apparently this is going to scale with the Mattel Elites, the Jazzware Styles figures. That's what we all do want. So that is cool. But it has a very interesting like bottle spray mechanism. And they showed a cool glamour shot of him spitting mist up there. But not exactly sure how you're going to be able to do that if it's a pump head type thing. Would have really liked an effect piece with that one. And then, of course, a lot of people are up in arms about no finger tape, which is very iconic to the Great Muda, as we know as well. So that is missing. Maybe that'll be in the final edition. I'm not sure about that head spray gimmick. I'm not going to be using that. I'm going to be spraying other figures. I'm not going to get this liquids at my table. It just sounds like an absolute mess. So we'll see if that ends up shaking out good. But I picked it up, like I said. Uh, hopefully this leads to more Great Muda figures. We really need a Great Muda with his entrance attire, his mask, all that kind of stuff. I'd love his classic WCW NWA looks. So many Mudas they could do. I don't know if Bandai is the company we want for it, but fingers crossed. A lot of people are saying, oh, they're going to be the same size as the SH figure art ones of uh, years past. Not going to be the case. They're going to be a lot better than that. I have a feeling on this one, at least scale-wise. So very excited for the Great Muda. Uh, stay tuned. We'll talk about that in the future. Uh, but next up, we got the retro wrestling figure portion of the show. Every single week, we still are working on a jingle. Uh, Jeff George is here, and I'm going to hit him up later. We said, Jeff, we need just a couple of tasty licks to transition into this every week. And I think he'll help me out with that. So we'll see what happens there. 
Uh, but we're going to start off with the retros this week here. We're going to talk about Hastel Toys. And Hastel broke the retro internet this week. Uh, the Grapplers and Grim Gimmicks line. We did see carded images of Carlito. And uh, people were out there with their pitchforks and a little worked up because they felt there was a bit of a bait and switch. I guess you guys can see the pictures of what we were promoted and what we actually received. Still not terrible figure, but it doesn't have that beautiful hot dog color skin tone that we all love so much. It is missing that. So I can see some people saying, hey, I pre-ordered this. I don't want this. And that's the way it kind of goes. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, but that is a little interesting uh, miss on that one because I thought the skin tones on like Mike Drosy was really, really good. Oscar was good as well. But Godwin's I had a couple of issues with. Felt a little Simpson-y, but we need to be specific. We need to keep in the kind of same scaling kind of looking uh, of figures here. But I still think this Carlito looks good. Uh, the hair might be just a touch different as well. I like the Apple accessory on this one, but Carlito is right around the corner. We will be unboxing that on the channel. I did pre-order one of those. But I know some people are up in arms, so I wanted to talk about that. But uh, he was not done this week. Uh, the Grappler Grimmicks line showed off a lot of artwork of some things, and we saw T.L. Hopper. Now, T.L. Hopper isn't a famous, uh, super famous wrestler. If you know him, you know him. If you don't, well, I can understand why. He wasn't around a whole lot. Uh, this was back at the time, my, actually my least favorite time of my wrestling fandom in my life. So he wasn't setting the world on fire. There's no doubt about it. He was setting some toilets on fire as a plumber, of course, I'm sure, on a daily basis. But uh, T.L. Hopper, not a super memorable character, but I like getting characters that we never have received before, we've never got an action figure of before. There's something special about that. So we are getting him in the line, which I think is pretty cool. We're also getting Dan Spivey, a.k.a. Waylon Mercy. Now that is one way ahead of its time, as we all remember Dan Spivey, pretty much for other things, the skyscrapers, uh, it's time for WWE beforehand, but Waylon Mercy was quite the gimmick, kind of like Bray Wyatt before Bray Wyatt, getting the first ever Waylon Mercy figure. I think this is cool. Grapplers Gimmicks also running a little bit of a pull there. Choose the outfit, choose the attire. Kind of went with the Papa Shango style, and I think that really does work. I was kind of racking my brain about what they would use. I think that is the body. Either that or nails kind of jumped out at me as what kind of body style they would use. So I have no problems with this one uh, having the Papa Shango body uh, on him here. So Dan Spivey gave me another interesting one. First time in the line, first time ever figure. Very cool to see that. And then one that really blew my mind, and I had to think about it. I had to look it up, and then it kind of clicked in my head. But it was Uncle Tony, a.k.a. Cletus, who was the manager of the Godwins for a short period of time or around the Godwins. I barely remember that. I saw the picture of them. I'm like, gosh, I do remember that. Because I always thought of good old Hillbilly Jim, all Outlaw Country Zone Hillbilly Jim, just uh, keeping it down every Saturday night on Outlaw Country on Sirius XM. Shout out to Hillbilly Jim. Great friend of the channel I wish I had. That's what I'm going to say with that one there. Where do I get a hat like Hillbilly Jim? I want that as well. And then maybe a horseshoe as well as while I'm at it. But Uncle Cletus coming, Grabbler's Gimmick. could be an interesting one, but if you're going to pair that with your Godwins, you can have the ultimate dream match. Men on a mission with Oscar, Cletus with the Godwins. Oh, it writes itself. Your fig fed will never thank you more if you do get those. So a lot going on with Grabbler's and Gimmicks in that aspect uh, of the figure game this week, we'll say. Now, Epic Toys this week, I have the British Bulldogs, or I should say I have Demolition and the Powers of the Pain waiting at home for me. I'm very excited to dive into those. Look to those reviews coming very, very soon. But we did see carded images, beautiful glamour shots of the British Bulldogs. Man, Epic Toys, of course, the former Cella, really seemingly stepping up the game on their figures lately. They've shown some great figures off. Hopefully in hand, they will be just as good. We're going to find out real soon right here on this channel, so stay tuned for that. So excited there. Zombie Sailor never gives up either. Heels and Faces line. We did see images of Todd Pettengill. So Todd Pettengill, another first time in the liner there. In the retro line, 90 staple, of course, of WWF TV. Todd Pettengill coming at the end of February with Smart Mark Sterling. So be on the lookout for that one. And not to be outdone there, KWK, of course, their retro line right around the corner from those guys coming uh, another month or two, I guess, at this point. But they did show off a little bit of here's what's coming, and it was La Resistance. Now, La Resistance, going back to the Jacks Ruthless Aggression days, we haven't had figures of them, so I like the idea of them in the line as well. Re the retro line is where everything is kind of coming together. Everybody's making different lines, and we're almost getting every single character we want in retro. I know a lot of us, myself included, I would like the Elite style, but it is something cool about all these retro figures coming along there. And KWK will have, of course, La Resistance up for pre-order. I don't know when exactly, but probably uh, once they ship their first items, I'm sure that's when those will probably end up going up. So stay tuned to that. 
But speaking of KWK, I thought I saw something this week on their social media that I thought was really, really cool. They showed kind of the sample, and they're going to individually number every single figure on the foot of the retro figure. I think that is really cool. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the one-of-ones, one-of-fives in any toy line. I just, I don't know, it just ices people out and then there's people that really want to have be a completist of a toy line that can't and it makes people say you know i guess i just won't get in the toy line and i understand that too so i also i see all sides of it and i know people love to have limited collectability collectibles and things like that i mean i see all sides of it but just me personally but one thing i do like let's say they're going to make five thousand manatar well it's going to be individually numbered five thousand they'll say you know this one's number four this one's number 444 whatever it may be i think that's pretty cool i, I do like that we've seen figures like that over the years do that but a little bit of a lost art here in the last decade or so so i like that aspect that kwk is going to do i would love to see more retro lines do that but i know a lot of toy lines uh, from the big to the small, they don't like to announce how many figures they're making. That's another thing. So if you're only making 200 figures and you're Todd McFarlane, you're like, oh, I don't want people to know I'm only making 200 and it's a mass release. I understand that too. So it, it's all in how the message gets out there, but I do think that looks really cool. And that's it for the retro wrestling, except our old friends at Powertown in the Repco line. Now, they've been driving me absolutely crazy. I film the toy news on Fridays. Friday nights, they've been announcing all the new Powertown figures. Well, this week, since I'm doing it a day later because I am traveling, uh, I did get two Remco announcements in this video right here. We're going to see Ariba himself, old Tito Santana. Oh, man, can't wait to see Tito return to an action figure line. It's been quite some time since we got a Mattel of Tito Santana. But we're getting him here uh, in the Remco style line. Very interesting. I'm going to see Tito Santana this July. I can't wait to give him an Ariba, get a picture with him. Uh, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day when I see Tito. Uh, but we are getting him from the Repco line. And then one I'm very excited about. I don't have a ton of regrets as far as meeting people and not getting a picture with them and things. Nick Bockwinkle will always be one of those regrets for me. Ten years ago, once again, what is time? Uh, I did meet Nick Bockwinkle, and he was the nicest guy ever. And I was just having a nice conversation with him. Just, you know, I'm just a punk kid at the time. Why would he want to give me time? But he would have gave me the shirt off his back or maybe the Rolex off his wrist maybe is what he would have gave me. But one of the nicest guys ever and a guy I would love to see in a Legends line, things like that. We'll take what we can get with the Power Town. Have to imagine we might get a Power Town Ultra in the future of Nick Bockwinkle. I would definitely be here for that as well. Uh, one of the all-time greats out there is Nick Bockwinkle and a very cool Remco style. But it's interesting, if you kind of squint your eyes a little bit on that Remco, it kind of looks like Larry Zabisco. All shout out to Larry Zabisco. But he does have that look to him, even with that kind of blondish hair Larry had way early on. Uh, but yeah, it looks a little bit like that to me. But I'm here for Tito. I'm here for uh, Nick B Bockwinkle. Sign me up all day long and twice on Sunday. Now we continue to some non-wrestling stuff. Oh yeah, we're getting out of the wrestling game and we're heading over to the Mondo game. Mondo coming in extra hot this week with just a little guy. One of the all-time little people of all time is of course Orko, right up there with Copper Kid, I guess Gwildor as well. Maybe a good friend of the channel, Emmanuel Lewis, whoever it may be. We love our little people and uh, Orko fits that mold real well. Now, I'm not talking anything about this new Netflix uh, Masters Universe. I have not seen that. I've avoided spoilers. I'm gonna keep that going on. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I don't uh, get any spoilers to that. So no comments about that. None. But we'll see what happens. But Orco this week pre-order. I believe it ends Tuesday of next week, so we still have some time. A lot going on with this Orco. I believe we saw it for the first time at PowerCon. An amazing looking figure, no doubt about it. It is small, it is little, especially for a $200 plus price point, but there is a lot of accessories with it. You get another Orco right there, a smaller version. You get Drayel, uh, you get legs. Yes, Orco's got legs. He's finally gonna learn to walk. It's gonna be amazing. You also get the unmasked head for Orco. So there's a lot of cool Orco stuff in this. Uh, it's truly the ultimate Mondo Orco. And Orco, as goofy as he is and annoying from time to time, you got to have him if you're collecting your Mondo figures. I think he's a must-have, must-pick up there. So if you're into Mondo, you're into Orco, you know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, but we're not done with He-Man stuff. Keldor, Rev uh, the revolution figure there of Keldor, kind of a secret character, I guess. They didn't want to announce it. Now, I've seen the figure. I saw it before. But they did finally show off the full-on glamour shots because the show is off. Uh, obviously, uh, he turns into Skeletor, I would assume, in this uh, series as well. So you kind of know what you're getting there if you're a longtime Masters Universe fan. But an interesting take on this Kildor. I'm not sure what I think of it. i got to see it in the show first. Got to drink it in a little bit and see how it does 
at the table, of course. Not this table. I'm not going to be here, but uh, you know what table. You know what table. Shout out to my table. Boy, I miss that table. Great table. One of the best. One of the best tables. Uh, Keldor Revolution coming very hot very, very soon. Now we're going to turn our attention to Turtles of Skull, And this is another one that got pictures shown right after we did Toy News last week. But it's Slaker, Slacker, Slaker, whatever you want to do. We saw in-package images of that one. Once again, this line still uh, really confuses me. Got more unboxings of Series 2 this weekend on the channel, so check those ones out. I get it's not supposed to be a mashup, but then all of a sudden it's a mashup here and there. We saw that Splinter on the back of the card art, Splinter uh, King Grayskull mix and mash, and then you get Faker and, of course, Slash together. So you say it's not a mashup, but then you do mashup figures. It just really does confuse me. So it's the highs and the ups and downs, the peaks and the valleys of this toy line. I'm just not, uh, I like it, but it's just not my absolute favorite thing ever. But there is some sleeper figures in there, especially this weekend. There's one that I think is the best figure they have released so far. Uh, so check out those reviews on the channel this weekend. And then we get to turn our attention to Todd McFarlane on the futon. Yes, the futon. Todd traveled. Maybe not. Todd's not here today. I think he's back at home attending uh, to my dogs for me, which is really nice of him. Those guys, uh, they need all the uh, attention they can get, and Todd's delivering. He's delivering, but he's also delivering the goods like a young Judas Priest with a lot of action figure news this week. It never ends with Todd McFarlane. never ends. He did announce the Dark Knight Catwoman with Cycle. That was a pass for me. I wouldn't mind having that in my collection. Uh, the Catwoman looks really, really good. Looks screen accurate, at least in the pictures we saw there. I don't really need that cycle, though. It's so big. It's going to be a shelf killer there. And I don't like that like $79 price point or something like that. That's just a little too rich for my blood for what it is. If it was just a figure, I'd pick it up. But that whole kit and caboodle was just too much. But I know some people do want that one. So shout out if uh, you're picking that one up. One I did pick up, of course, on Friday, went up for pre-order. It was Parallax. Of course, Hal Jordan, Glow in the Dark Edition. I tell you what, my Glow in the Dark closet, it's coming along really good. This thing's going to be so bright, we're going to have to wear shades in that thing. It's going to be that bright of Glow in the Dark. But we got Parallax coming from Amazon. Man, it looks amazing. That's a good figure to begin with, with the extra bells and whistles. Looks really cool. Packaging design. Could be one of the best McFarlane figures of 2024. Much like I uh, voted the Swamp Thing Glow in the Dark for 2023. That's an amazing figure as well. So Glow in the Dark, it's the name of the game right now. It's the way to go. And then Saturday morning as I'm filming this, we got two announcements from Todd. He doesn't even take weekends off. He's not messing around. He says, what is time? What is days? No days off. Always be working. Constant learning, constant improvement. That's what he's saying every single day, old Todd. He's, a, he's an enigma wrapped in a riddle, really, at the end of the day. But uh, he did announce uh, two Target exclusives, gold label. I guess this is going to be the next round to mixed emotions for me. These two might be those long game clearance item ones. There's Midnighter out there right now. I'm waiting for him to go on clearance. I know it's going to happen. I'm going to pick him up on clearance. But he did announce the rival uh, from Flash. It's basically Jay Garrick with a different head. There, there may be a little different colors too, but a very easy repaint, but is true to the story there. So we do got a repaint with that one. That will be Target exclusive. And then the final one, Batgirl Cassandra Kane. I had to read that because I do not know who Cassandra Kane is. However, I do like the soft goods cape. It's cape season year-round. Uh, out here in L.A. today, beautiful cape weather. I saw a guy that was a spitting image for Lando Calrissian walking down the street. I almost uh, gave him a high five and said, hey, what's up, Lando? But it wasn't him, so I'm glad I didn't embarrass myself. Uh, could have been very embarrassing. But soft goods we don't get from McFarlane a whole lot, so it is really cool when they do that. But we got two gold label editions right around the corner. No rest for the wicked for old Todd McFarlane. And that's it. That's the toy news. Like I said, Mattel Reveals was yesterday, so check out that if you did miss it. Uh, we got the Patreon giveaway, all that kind of stuff. But now we got to turn our attention to Album of the Week. And Album of the Week this week comes from our good friends, old Biff and the Boys, Saxon, Hellfire and Damnation, the new one. Uh, I was, uh, somebody, I forget in the comments, said, hey, I'm surprised it wasn't. I said, well, it came out on Friday. I filmed uh, Toy News Weekly Purchases on Friday afternoon. Didn't have time to listen to it. So this week, I listened to it twice. It is your standard Saxon fare is where we are right now. Now, Brian Tatler recently joined Saxon from Diamond Head. I love Brian Tatler. I love some Diamond Head. I think that's going to give a new punch into the band, at least in the live shows going forward. He has been in the music videos, but I don't believe he is part of this album. I think uh, uh, it's the old crew there, at least as far as I remember. I'd have to double check, but... I do like the album, however, it's a lot like Udo or Udio, uh, maybe even a little Accept, things like that, where it just gets a little paint by numbers, you know what you're going to get, you like it, it's a good listen, you listen through it, it's like, hey, it's pretty good, 
but you can't say, you know, my favorite song was this. It's, it's the Roswell song. That's my favorite. Uh, that's the, the current single there. But there's nothing that sticks out and grabs you. It's like, hey, it's great as a whole. It's a great half hour to spend your time but nothing sticks with you and keeps with you. And that's kind of how I find a lot of that kind of legacy metal, especially some of those new wave of British heavy metal bands. They're good, they, f they play the flavor, they uh, keep on brand, and you know what you're gonna get, which isn't a bad thing, but nothing really, really jumps out. But it is worth a listen, especially if you're a Saxon fan. And if you like denim and leather, you should probably listen to it as well. It's always a pro tip if you're a Saxon fan. So there it is. That is the album of the week, and I'm looking at my notes one last time. That's it, LA edition, Toy News of the Week, all done. Quick and easy this week here. What do you guys think? Anything jump out at you? Anything you needed to see? Anything you were hoping to see this week? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the old notification bells. We got videos every single day and then some. We got even more content for you on Patreon, including early access to both YouTube channel videos, uh, bonus content, Q and A's, you name it. Doing a Q and A here this weekend for January. Stay tuned to that for the Patreon members. Another hotel video, maybe from Vegas is where that one will come from. So stay tuned to that uh, in the next uh, couple of days if you're a Patreon member. And of course the Broadway giveaway as well. ProWrestlingTees.com, support the channel, pick up t-shirts, search Kyle Peterson. Don't forget social media, Sir Paul 64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. And until next week, you know what I'm doing? I'm rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling my way around the West Coast.